A new public health crisis is looming in Australia, caused by the abuse of a drug most people consider benign. Over-the-counter painkillers containing a mixture of codeine and ibuprofen are widely regarded as safe and effective. But in fact, they're addictive, potentially harmful and on rare occasions even deadly. Doctors are reporting that some patients are going on methadone to wean off Nurofen Plus. As Connor Duffy reports, some pharmacists are calling for a review on the sale of these drugs. All the time I just have joint pain, especially in my shoulders and my elbows. And sometimes it'll flare up um, in the cold especially, it gets a lot worse, so throughout winter I'm in, usually in a fair amount of pain. Frankie Bean practices yoga first thing every morning to stave off the chronic pain of lupus disease, an autoimmune condition that leaves her hurting every day. It's a much healthier option than the over-the-counter painkillers she turned to last year. Well, initially it was just that I could work and I could have my life back, and I was really excited by that, so I was just willing to do whatever it took to do that. But then, yeah, I sort of started realising that I was a bit hooked on it. Soon, Frankie Bean was using Nurofen Plus 24 hours a day. It lowered her blood pressure so badly, she passed out at work. I was just at work and I hadn't felt good in the morning, like I was getting a bit dizzy and stuff. And I just put it down to lupus. I didn't really think too much about it and I just tried to work through it. And then the next thing I know, my sister was by my side, bawling her eyes out. And I was passed out at the front of my work. And like, you know, I was on the ground and there were ambulance people around me taking me off to the hospital. Weeks later, she quit cold turkey. I had headaches. I vomited a lot. I was absolutely horrible to be around. I had the worst temper. This is me off. <laughs> it's just too easy. And it is something that people don't realise they can get. I had no idea that I'd get addicted to coding. Hi, how are you today? Good, thanks. Good. Can I get a pack of Nurofen Plus, please? Have you had it before? Yep. Yep. Um, can I ask you what you're using it for? Abuse of codeine is a wider problem, not confined to pain relief. I know of people who will take it just for fun because it's that strong. It can, like, give you almost a bit of a high off of it. Um, and you can just, anyone can just walk into the chemist and just say, can I have a packet of codeine? And they'll just hand it over without even blinking. I was going into the same chemist twice a week for six months and no one ever asked me any questions about it. You've been uh, visiting a lot of pharmacies and using over-the-counter codeine. Can you tell me a bit about that? Dr Matthew Fry runs a drug treatment clinic in Melbourne and knows firsthand how addictive codeine can be. When you, when you can't get access to codeine or you stop taking the over-the-counter codeine products, what happens? Yeah, I, I just feel really achy. I feel like I've got the flu. It is a close relative of drugs like morphine and heroin. So, yes, it is an addictive drug. Uh, we're a bit unusual in Australia in that uh, you can purchase codeine over-the-counter. That's not the case in all parts of the world. He published a study on 27 Australians who had to go on morphine just to get off codeine. It is quite a scary and um, foreign idea for somebody uh, who's not had much contact with the drug using culture to be offered a, a treatment that's usually offered to heroin addicts. However, uh, the principles of addiction to codeine or to prescription opioids, to all the opioids, are very similar. Lay back and enjoy the music that only you can hear. Back in the 1950s and 1960s, people were getting addicted to Beck's headache powder, which contained caffeine. The serious problems that resulted saw them banned in 1977. It's the same thing. It's the same marketing manoeuvre. It's using a anti-inflammatory agent, linking it to another drug which causes the patient to keep on taking it because of the withdrawal symptoms they get when the effect wears off and thereby accumulating bigger and bigger and bigger doses. This is headache powders revisited. Today's compound analgesics are known by their popular brand names like Nurofen Plus, Panofen Plus and Mesindol. The codeine in the drugs gets consumers hooked, but the real danger is the ibuprofen they contain, 
which in large doses is toxic and can cause internal bleeding. Well, good afternoon, Craig. Good afternoon, okay. Dr Aidan right, Foy, the Director of now? General Medicine at Newcastle's Mater oh, no, Hospital no, 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 and a gastroenterologist, has well, seen patients with life-threatening conditions from over-the-counter codeine. Peptic ulceration can also be lethal. In fact, one of my worst moments in the last few years was when I was up all night with a young man who was otherwise well, who was bleeding torrentially from a giant ulcer in his stomach, which was caused by compound analgesics. And her observations look stable, yeah, yeah. There's been at least one death from over-the-counter codeine in Australia, and Dr Foy says it was only through good fortune that his young patient survived. Okay. Great. All right, thank this you. man needed 14 units of blood over the night, and we were running out of blood, and um, by the time he was anaesthetised, um, he was in really big trouble. But fortunately for him, there was a very good surgeon handy who moved very quickly and stopped the bleeding, and he has now recovered. Since 2008, doctors around the country have been documenting scores of cases of codeine abuse, some leading to peptic ulcers, kidney failure and even pancreatitis. To see significant numbers of otherwise well young people showing up with a life-threatening condition that is totally artificial is extremely frustrating and very worrying and it's very scary. It is an extremely unpleasant sensation to be um, up in the middle of the night with somebody who looks as though they're going to die to no purpose. That's pointless. In a statement to 730, manufacturers of the drugs and an industry group say compound analgesics provide help to millions of Australians who suffer pain. They also say that if taken as directed, the drugs are perfectly safe and that since 2010, pharmacists have been required to advise customers on safe use at every sale. This is an important safeguard that balances the need for patients to have timely relief from pain whilst ensuring the appropriateness of the medicine on a case-by-case -case basis. However, Michael Meany, who runs a pharmacy in Sheffield, a small town in northwest Tasmania, believes the sales restrictions are still too lax. I've had people come from as far as Smithton, 150 kilometres away, and uh, Launceston, 100 kilometres to the east away, coming here to buy codeine-based products from my pharmacy in Sheffield. Now taking the law into their own hands, Mr Meany and other local pharmacists use software designed to track sales of pseudoephedrine, a key component of amphetamines. It involves recording customers' licence details to stop codeine road trips. We're doing it because we think that's the lesser evil to perhaps infringe on people's personal privacy, to infringe on these privacy laws, rather than allow a handful of people doing an enormous amount of damage to themselves. Some doctors are convinced these pills should be banned. I think it is an emerging public health crisis and it's one that can be stopped. It can be stopped very easily. Um, all that has to be done is they need to be made available on prescription only or, in my view, as I've said, remove the pharmacopoeia altogether.